right, hey you guys. My name is Janelle, I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I specialize in pelvic health. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you about exercises, specifically pelvic floor exercises that you can do if you have sexual pain. And the reason why I'm holding this right here is because being hydrated is a crucial part of your sexual wellness. You don't have to go overboard and have like two gallons a day of water, but when it comes to sex, a lot of it is driven by hydration. You want your uterus, your vagina, and your clitoris to be well hydrated. So the more fluid that you're drinking throughout the day, um, a good parameter would be take your weight and divide that into two. And that's a good amount of fluid ounces of water to get for the day. So for example, if I weigh 160, then I'm going to divide that into two. So that'll give me 80 ounces of water, 80 fluid ounces that I would want to get for the day. So um, keep that in mind and ensure that you're not dehydrating yourselves, forgetting about this if you need to, to set a timer, do that. So, you know, because we can do all the pelvic floor exercises we want, but if there's other things going on in the body where your blood is not flowing as well because you're, you're not hydrated, then that can lead to vaginal dryness and that can even affect, you know, your arousal if there's not sufficient blood flow. So that's really important. The next thing I want to say before we even get to the pelvic floor exercises is that foreplay is very important whenever you are participating in penetrative sex and in any sex really. It just improves the experience because you're going to now be having again more blood flow because that's what arousal is so whether we have a penis or we have a vagina when we have a penis the penis lengthens and it gets wider because it's filling with blood we have clitorises and so my clitoris gets larger and it fills with blood whenever i'm getting aroused that also and allows your vagina to lengthen so an example of that is this here. And so when you're getting more aroused, your vagina will lengthen and lift that uterus up so that penetration is, is more comfortable and pleasurable. And that's very important as well because the more pleasure you have during your sexual experience, the more likely you're going to want to have sex again. And so sometimes we may struggle with low libido or poor arousal. <clears throat> so start your foreplay early. If you are participating in partnered sex, start your foreplay early by texting your partner throughout the day, um, by giving them sexy compliments. As soon as they walk in, you want to start with a hug or a kiss. All of that is beginning your foreplay and that's going to be getting your body ready so that you're less likely to experience pain. All right. The next thing we want to talk about is the actual pelvic floor. So your pelvic floor does so many different things. It controls your bladder, your bowel, and is very important for sexual function. So for the sake of this video, we're going to talk about how the pelvic floor will enable you to have better sex and also decrease your level of pain if you improve the flexibility in your pelvic floor and enable your pelvic floor to open well during sex. Your pelvic floor has a sphincteric function and what that means is that there are muscles around the opening of the vagina and the, uh, the urethra. This, sm this small hole here is where we pee from and then we have another sphincter here. And so when our muscles become too restricted, that can decrease the level of comfort that you experience with initial penetration or the initial insertion, but also the thrusting. Because every time you go in and out, if those muscles at the superficial layer of the pelvic floor are not relaxing well, baby, you're going to be in pain. You might feel some stuff. You might even feel some burning. And, and the place you don't want to get to is you stopping because it hurts. Not because you're not free to do so, right? If you feel like you need to stop, definitely stop. But if you're looking to have a fulfilling sexual relationship with another person and you're constantly being um, prohibited from that because of the pain, then what we want to do is improve the relaxation of your sphincteric muscles here and then also the deeper layer of the pelvic floor. And we're going to talk about that now, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be laying on our back. 
okay? We're gonna be laying on our back and we're going to lay in this position here, okay? You're gonna place your hands on your lower belly and what I want you to do is when you breathe in, I want you to envision your vagina getting longer as you breathe in. So you're not gonna push your vagina out like you're trying to poop or have a baby. You're going to just let your vagina lengthen, right? Because as the air comes in, your abdomen will go out and the bottom of that, of that cavity or the bottom of that, that canister is your pelvic floor. And so that's gonna lengthen as you breathe in, okay? So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Hands on the lower belly, and then I'm gonna breathe in. Deep breath in again. And the whole time that I'm doing that, I'm really allowing my vagina to number one lengthen. And also, if you think about the opening of the vagina as having some corners, let the corners of your vagina get further apart as you breathe in. So imagine that your vaginal opening is widening as you breathe in. And then as you exhale, it just kind of comes back to where it initially started from. You're not gonna be squeezing or kegeling Relax your bottom, your butt, and your belly. And that will slowly start to train your body to lengthen that pelvic floor and relax when you get your diaphragm working with your pelvic floor. So we're gonna do that a couple more times. Your hands on your lower belly. Relax your shoulders as well. You really wanna be relaxed from your, from your forehead all the way down to your toes. And we're gonna breathe in. So that's diaphragmatic breathing with vaginal lengthening. And the reason why I'm saying vaginal lengthening is because you can be breathing into your diaphragm with your ribs expanding out to the side, your abdomen growing out towards the front, but if you're still tense down below because you're not connected to your pelvic floor, you're not aware of what's going on, then that can be a dysfunctional pattern that you're carrying throughout the whole day, right? So when you're breathing, especially on that inhale, think about letting that pelvic floor drop down and away from you as you breathe in. Um, a good amount of times to do your diaphragmatic breathing is to not do it based on reps, but to do it based on minutes, right? So you really take time because diaphragmatic breathing is all about down-regulating your nervous system, decreasing your levels of stress, um, even meditation. So I would say try to do that for about three to five minutes at a time so that you're focusing on the actual feeling of the air coming in, your belly rising, your vagina lengthening, as opposed to you trying to do it a certain amount of times. Um, and you may just be thinking too hard. So instead of timer, three to five minutes, you can do this one to two times a day. Even once a day is very helpful. Um, and especially before intercourse, if you predict that that's going to be happening within the next couple of hours or with maybe even within the next few minutes, diaphragmatic breathing is going to help lengthen and relax that pelvic floor and get it ready um, for insert of sex. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to show you is a dynamic child's pose position. For this position, you're going to be getting on your hands and on your knees, but pay attention to the fact that I've called it dynamic because sex is dynamic. You're not gonna be just laying on your back, not moving. Your muscles should be moving, right? As you're getting aroused, things are contracting, you're changing positions, 
you might be um, on top or you might be doing more of the movement. So we really want to make sure that we're doing our exercises in positions that simulate what happens during intercourse. So what we're going to do is we're going to be on our hands and on our knees. And it's really important that you set up correctly. And what I mean by my setup is I'm in alignment. So my wrist is right underneath my shoulder. The other thing is my knees are right underneath my hips. So you wouldn't want to be like this because that's not in alignment and that can lead to some shoulder pain or strain. And the same thing for the lower extremity. You don't want your knees up here or back. You want it to be stacked, okay? The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring my knees out further towards the edge of this yoga mat. So they are, my knees are wider than shoulder width apart. And the reason for that is I just want my pelvic floor to open a bit more and, and it can help to, to open the legs. So what we're going to do is we're going to still use that diaphragmatic breathing, right? When I breathe in, I'm going to arch my low back like this, and then I'm going to bring my butt down towards my feet and really just let go of my vagina, let go of my butt in my pelvic floor and then I'm going to come back as I'm breathing out. So I was doing it while I was talking but now I'm going to actually show you what that would look like so you're able to do this at home. So I'm going to breathe in So again, I'm, as I'm breathing in, and let me show you what my abdomen is doing because it's really important that you actually relax your belly. If you're holding your belly in, you see how my belly is in? Then you're going to restrict your pelvic floor. And a restricted pelvic floor is going to be a barrier to satisfying sex. And that can be contributing to painful sex. So I'm going to actually drop my belly. And when I breathe in, my belly might even flop down a little bit more. So, again, I'm going to arch my low back as I'm breathing in. I'm going to drop my butt down. And whenever I'm bringing my knees close to my, my chest, that's going to be opening up that pelvic floor. Okay? So I'm going to breathe in. During this time, really let that vagina open. Think loosey-goosey, let go of your anus, let go of everything, lengthen that vagina, and then exhale. This is one that you could do for repetition. So you could definitely do three sets of 10, or you could do four sets of 10 if you have more time, or even two sets of 10. Um, but definitely take your time on this one. Remember, arching up the low back. And as you're arching that low back, that's when you're opening up that vagina, really letting go of your pelvic floor, right? Think about that vaginal opening getting larger or blooming open like a flower. As you're breathing in and arching that spine and bringing that butt down, that's when you're really going to be opening up that pelvic floor and vagina, okay? And then as you come back, we're not squeezing as we come back. We're just breathing out. Okay? So again, a good um, amount of time to do that one would be three sets of 10. And that is a dynamic child's pose with vaginal lengthening or diaphragmatic breathing. They, they both should go together. So when you're breathing in down into the diaphragm, your vagina should be getting longer from, from below. Okay, so think of your, your abdominal canister, your belly and your pelvic floor below, like a balloon. The front of the balloon is your belly. The bottom of the balloon is your pelvic floor. And as you're breathing in, remember the bottom of the pelvic floor 
is the bottom of the balloon. The front of the balloon is your abdominal wall. And what happens when we put air into a balloon? Everything gets bigger and the same thing happens here. As you breathe in, your belly should rise, ribs go out to the side, pelvic floor drops down below. Then on that exhale, everything naturally recoils because the pressure and the air is leaving. It's not recoiling because you're squeezing. So you're not going to be kegling on these, these exercises. So we've done diaphragmatic breathing. We've done dynamic child's pose with vaginal lengthening. And what I want you to do now is we're going to move into, I'm trying to think of what I want to call this one, but this is a creative exercise and you can give it your own name. Um, but I like to call them cobra dives and you're going to, you're going to see why I call it that. It kind of looks like you're diving, but it's also like a, a pelvic roll. Okay. So similar position, we're going to be on our hands and on our knees. And our knees are going to be a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. This time, your arms are going to be further out in front of you, okay? So what's going to happen is we're going to start here, okay? So I'm, I'm rounding my back, kind of flattening my back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my butt back and then arch like this. Open and relax the vagina round the back open and relax the vagina round the back this one also can can kind of increase your libido okay so that's what we're doing there and it kind of looks like a thrusting position right because thrusting is really all about the pelvis anyways but this is going to be good because we're bringing more blood flow to the pelvic floor and we're lengthening and opening especially here and then we're coming back to neutral about right there. Opening the pelvic floor in this arching position. And then we're coming back. So it's essentially like a wave. And this one would be a great one to do for a particular period of time. Doing this for about three to four minutes is great. Again, because they're teaching that pelvic floor how to open up. And you're also getting your, your pelvis to move, right? If we have a pelvis that's locked down, if we have restrictions in the low back, if we have restrictions in the hip, if we have restrictions in the, in the thighs, then you can release your pelvic floor all you want with the trigger point release and the child's pose and all of that. But we have to get the whole house moving so that the muscles that attach to that house or the pelvis are more than likely able to function optimally because the foundation is also moving and the foundation is also mobile okay so again that can be done for about three to five minutes and the next one that i'm going to show you is a common position for sexual pain and pelvic floor tightness i'm sure you've seen happy baby and this is going to be slightly different from happy baby but very similar at the same time. So we're going to be on our back for this one. And, you know, with sex, one of the common positions is missionary. So this position particularly will be helpful for missionary. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring this knee towards your, towards your shoulder. And you're going to grab on the outside of that foot. On the other side, grab on the outside of the foot. And then you're just going to kind of bring those, the soles of your feet together and let your back relax as much as you can. If you have any ankle pain or if you're having any pain anywhere with this, you don't want to force yourself to do it. So if you're having hip pain, if you're feeling pain in your back or your ankle, then try giving yourself a little bit more support, like right around the actual ankle joint right here where it bends and see if that gives your ankle more support. In this position, I really want you to focus on letting that vaginal opening really expand and, and relax. Imagine that you want to let gas come out of your vagina like, like you want it to fart from your vagina, <laughs> which I should make a video about vaginal queefing because sometimes that can be due to pelvic floor dysfunction. Other times it can happen during sex when the pelvic floor is more relaxed. 
But for the sake of this exercise, imagine that you want to let something fall out of the vagina. Or because we're in this position with our pelvis up, imagine that you want your vagina to open to allow a blessing to drop on in there. Like, okay, I'm gonna imagine your vagina saying, come on in. And that's essentially what you want to do during this movement here is that you just want to relax that vaginal opening, like really let go. Like you're saying to someone, come on in, you're opening your vagina, right? And then you can also do diaphragmatic breathing with this. So if I breathe in, when I'm inhaling, I'm gonna feel my pelvic floor expand more as long as I'm not clenching my butt, my anus, or my vagina. So I'm gonna breathe in. If you have any knee pain with this, what you can do is grab up under the knees, grab up under the knees here, and then do it like this. You're gonna get the same effect as the other position. You're gonna get the same benefit. Just grab up under the knees and bring your knees towards your shoulder. And you're not straight like this. You're gonna open up those legs and bring the knees towards each shoulder. Same thing, imagine the vaginal opening is getting larger as you breathe in. And imagine that you want your vagina to say, come on in. So you're opening up to embrace whatever that inserting object or person is. Okay, so we're going to uh, take a deep breath in. One of the muscles that typically gets ignored for sexual pain is actually the hip flexors. These muscles right here. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do a hip flexor stretch because so many movements shorten the hip flexor, especially during sex, right? If we're in missionary, our hips and our legs are towards our shoulders. If we're in doggy style, our hip is shortened. And so we wanna make sure we have enough lengthening right here so that we're not getting cramps and we're not feeling tension when we're in these different common sexual positions, okay? So the next one is actually gonna be on our feet. We're going to actually get up on our feet, okay? So I'm gonna be like so, and I'm gonna have one leg out in front. My right leg is actually pointing out. My right leg is pointing out. My left leg is pointing forward. And what I'm gonna do is kind of tuck my tailbone under like this. And then with my left leg, I'm gonna bend that left knee, okay? So I can feel a lengthening here. I'm gonna take this arm and then just reach up, kind of side bend the other way. And I'm gonna hold that for about 30 seconds. You should feel a, a lengthening and a mild stretch here. So you're gonna hold that for about 30 seconds. Your pelvic floor might be engaging in this position, that's okay, because you're stabilizing your whole posture, right? You're stabilizing your whole body, your side bent. So this is a somewhat of a harder position to maintain, so your pelvic floor is engaging to support your pelvic organs. So it's okay if you don't feel your pelvic floor completely relaxing in this position. I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the other side. Okay. <laughs> so your leg is going to be back. My left leg is back and it's pointed out. My right leg and my right foot is pointed forward, okay? And what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to tuck my tailbone under like this, and then I'm going to bend that, that front knee, keep that back leg straight. Back leg stays straight. Front leg starts to bend. And then I'm going to reach my left arm up. Side bend to the right, ever so slightly. 
and you'll feel an opening sensation on that left hip. You can hold this stretch for one minute or you can hold it for 30 seconds and repeat it three times. Whatever feels more comfortable for you would be great, okay? And don't stretch so much that it hurts. All you wanna do is feel a mild to moderate stretching sensation. It should not be painful, okay? So what we've done today is we've gone over five exercises that can help you with sexual pain. Whether that's sexual pain in missionary, doggy style, on the side, riding, you know, cowgirl, whatever that position is, you need to have a pelvic floor that is not restricted. And you may have trigger points in your pelvic floor, meaning spots that are particularly painful. If you have ovodynia, if you have vaginismus, if you have any level of sexual pain, these exercises are gonna be helpful for you to bring more blood flow to your pelvic floor, to get your pelvis moving and get more range of motion there. And then also to train your pelvic floor on how to release and let go and to get your diaphragm moving as well to further encourage your pelvic floor to relax, which is so necessary during sex. You all, I'm so excited. If you watch this full video, make sure that you like this and subscribe to my channel so that you can continue to see more and more videos. I look forward to the next one. And let me know what topics you want me to talk about and teach about. I'm so open to doing that. All right, talk to you later.